All right, 4-5. Uh, we are going to go over how to graph a linear equation with three or, three or more variables. Really, we're going to focus on three. Okay, so um, we're going to look at something like this. We're going to try graphing this thing. 2x plus 2y plus z is equal to 4. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to just graph this by hand. Okay, I'm going to talk it through, and then we'll go over how to open a document and graph this on the calculator. So I'm going to graph this 2x plus 2y plus c is equal to 4. Okay, so let's, for a moment, let's think we're back when we're graphing something in two variables. Let's say we have 2x plus, I don't know, 5y is equal to... 20, okay, or is equal to 10. Let's say 10. Let's just make it simple, okay? One way to graph this is by plotting your intercepts, okay? Your x-intercept is your x value when y equals 0. Your y-intercept is your x value when x, or your y-intercept is your y value when x equals 0, okay? So your x-intercept, you plug in 0 for y. 2x equals 10, so you get 5. Your y-intercept is your y-value when x is 0. So if that's 0, your y-value, you'll get 5y equals 10, and you get 2. So we could plot the points and connect them. Just a simple way to graph a line using intercepts. Okay. So in three dimensions, with three variables, it's a little bit, a little bit different. Okay. So um, I'm going to graph it this way. Got an x-axis, a y-axis, and a z-axis. And you think of this x-axis coming out of the page towards you, coming straight out. It's perpendicular to the y-axis. It's perpendicular to the z-axis. It's hard to draw something in three dimensions on a two-dimensional flat piece of paper. But that's what we're going to do. Okay. So the y-z plane is actually on this piece of paper. This x-axis is coming out straight at you. So like I almost like I have this pencil, and it's coming out straight at you. Okay, kind of like that. Okay, and we're going to plot this by plotting the three intercepts. Okay, just like over here, your x-intercept was your x-value. So where you cross the x-axis when the y is zero. Well, here your x-intercept is going to be the x-value when everything else is zero. Okay? Your y-intercept is going to be the y-value when everything else is zero. Your z-intercept is going to be your z-value when everything else is zero, okay? So if y is zero and z is zero, this equation up here becomes 2x plus 2 times zero plus zero is equal to four, okay? And that becomes 2x equals four or x equals two. Our x-intercept is two. Now, the y-intercept is the y-value when x and z are both 0. So we get 2 times 0 plus 2y plus 0 is equal to 4. So those go away. We get 2y equals 4. The y-intercept is also 2. Finally, the z-intercept, plugging into this equation, 2 times 0 plus 2 times 0, plugging 0 for x and y, plus z equals 4. So we'll get z equals 4. So on the x-axis coming out at you, you have this point here, which is 2 comma 0 comma 0. The y-intercept is where we cross the y-axis. So when x is 0 and when z is 0, then we're simply going to go 2 in the direction over here. Um, and then our z-intercept, 1, 2, 3. Or when we cross here, that's going to be 0, 0, 4. This one is 0, 2, 0. Okay. And then we can connect these, and you can kind of see what that looks like. It's a plane. It's kind of hard to draw a plane, a three-dimensional plane with two, a two-dimensional piece of paper. Okay. If you go a few pages back in your packet, there's this graph paper here. 
So I'm going to redraw this with the graph paper. You can use it if you'd like. You don't have to. Um, this one, it, the way the graph paper works, so let's just draw, maybe draw our origin here. So our x-axis comes out this way. The y-axis, I usually draw it horizontally, but we could draw the y-axis to come out this way. So your intercepts at two, so you count two, one, two in this direction. That's the point two, zero, zero. We'll go this way two, one, two in this direction. Zero, two, zero. And then you go four on the Z axis. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Zero, zero, four. And then you would connect those. So I don't know if that's helpful, if that's more useful. If you want graph paper, okay, you can draw it that way or just draw it freehand. Okay. Now let's see what the calculator does. Let's graph this same one. Notice I, I just graphed this one by hand, which is the same one that we're going to be graphing on the calculator. So open a do, new document, add graphs. So I'm going to go to the calculator. Okay, we're going to open a new document. I don't want to save that. Add a graph. Now this is different. Look at what it says on your paper. Okay, now after we add graphs, we go to menu. And then you go to view. So it's graphing these differently. But this is the best that it can do. 3D graphing, it's actually pretty cool. So you're going menu, view, 3D graphing. And to graph a plane in 3D graphing, you must solve for z. Notice you have z1 of x, y. z is now a function of x and y, okay? So let's go back to this piece of paper for a second. We have to get the z by itself, okay? So to get the z by itself, we're gonna subtract two x from both sides. We're gonna subtract two y from both sides. So z equals four minus two x minus two y. And that's what we're gonna enter in the calculator. Okay, let's go back to the calculator. We've got four minus two X minus two Y. And hit enter. Okay, so there's our plane. It's kind of hard to see, but there's some cool things you can do here. If you follow along, it says you can press control menu. So hit the control menu, because this gives you a new menu for something like this. Um, you actually can grab a corner of this and kind of move it. Okay, so you can see the plane better. Um, but in this control menu, you've got control and then menu. And you can actually make it rotate. You can make it auto rotate, which is kind of neat. So then it's just going to move on its own. Okay, to make it stop, you hit the escape button. Okay, you can also go menu, you can do 3D. Uh, I'm sorry, we want control menu. Control and then menu. You could do rotate, but look at what it says when you're in rotate mode. Up here it tells you what to do. Use the arrow keys to rotate horizontally and vertically. So we can rotate to the right if you want a little more control and rotating horizontally, or you can rotate vertically that way. Also, you can play with some of the other things in here. Control menu, um, range and zoom. So you can zoom, you can magnify this, you can make it come out at you. You could shrink it if you want, and then you can rotate it again. Um, but let's take a look at this. So let's look, I'm gonna move this so I've got this kind of oriented the way. So there's my X axis. I think I want to go around this way. I want this to look the way that it looks on our paper, kind of. It's hard to see because, okay, here's, so you can see there, there's our positive x-axis, here's our positive y. So this is kind of how our paper looks. If we go back to our paper, um, you can kind of see it looked like that. It's going to look a little different, but you can get the idea. Um, if we wanted to graph, we could graph some, uh, we could graph these xy plane, the yz plane. 
Well, we could graph the xy plane, which would be z equals zero. Let's do that. Does it let us do that? Graph another one. Menu. Actually, let's just do it tab and we can graph another one. So z equals zero is the xy plane. So you can see right there, that's the xy plane. And this is the trace or that thing right there where the red meets the blue, that line is the trace. It's called the xy trace because that's the line of intersection between our plane and the xy plane. Okay. Well, I don't know if we can do the other ones because the other ones aren't functions of x and y. Let's try something. Hit a tab. Does it let us change the mode, the entry mode? Let's try this. Mm, maybe we could do parametric. Okay, so now if we let our x value equal, um, let's see, if we say x equals zero, what happens if we do that? No, that doesn't work. Okay, so that's not going to work. I thought maybe there was a way we could change the mode into something different, but no. And the functionality for these this type of graphing is not as robust as it is for the regular graphing, okay? So let's go back to our paper, okay? Um, and let's look at these. So we could have, oh, a couple things I want to talk about. Um, so this is the plane that I plotted. I plotted the xy plane. The xy plane is where z is equal to zero, okay? Because it's on the xy plane and the z value is zero. So over here on the y, on y equals zero is the xz plane. So this plane over here on the left um, is, is y equals zero. Notice your y value is zero. You didn't move along the y axis. You stayed here. Your x and your z might not be zero, but then you'll end up on this plane as long as y is zero. And then this plane back here, the one that's shaded in black, that is called the yz plane. And the yz plane is where the x value is zero. Okay, because you didn't come off that plane. You didn't move in the x direction. You only moved in the y direction and the z direction, so you stayed on this plane back here. Okay, so now we're going to talk about how to plot individual points. Okay, the point 0.215, if we wanted to plot that point. So the x-axis, the y-axis, the z-axis. Again, you can use your piece of paper if you want that graphing paper over here. If you want to plot it on here. Okay. But in the x direction, you're going positive 2. In the y direction, you're going to go positive 1. And in the z direction, you're going to go up 5. And then it's hard to see exactly where that point is. On the xy plane, you went this way too, and you went over one. And then we're going to go up five. One, two, three, four, five. So you can kind of make a box here. Up five. So this, you don't have to draw this box. This box is not your entire point. But in order to show dimension, this point here, to this point here, my pencil is not very good. Let me get a sharper pencil. It's this point right here, that point right there at that corner is 215. Okay. Maybe for fun, we'll graph that point on here so we can see it. In the x direction, we're going to go 1, 2. In the y direction, we're going to go 1. So you can kind of see this point over here. That's 2, comma 1. In the z, we're going to go from there. We're going to go up 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. That goes up this way. This kind of helps you to draw because from here you go one, two, three, four, five. So this kind of helps you draw 
a little better when you want to see a point. And this point right here is your point 215. Okay, let's do a couple more. So this one, 3, negative 3, 4. Okay, now we have a negative value. Move this over so if you use space. So three, positive three in the x direction. Then we're going to go in the y direction, we're going to go negative three. So instead of going off to the right, which is the positive y, we're going to go off to the left, which is negative three. That's going to be the point back here. We were to graph it on the xy plane and then up four. So this point right here would be your point three, negative three, four. Three in the positive x, three in the negative y, and then up four. This point over here, actually I won't do them all. I'll put, I'll put these in the answer key, okay? Which point is not on the graph? Well, you're just plugging in six for x, zero for y, zero for z, and see if that works. Two times six plus zero minus zero is equal to 12. Well, that works. Let's do this one. Two times three plus three times three plus uh, minus three equals 12. Is that true? That's six plus nine, 15 minus three. That works. That equals 12. So here we get two times zero plus three times four minus zero equals 12. Well, that works. Two times one plus three times one minus seven equals 12. And that does not seem to work. So there's the one that is not on your graph, is not on the plane. What are your intercepts? I'm just going to write these out. Your x-intercept is when y and z are zero. The y-intercept is when x and z are zero. And the z-intercept is when x and y equals 0. So if you plug in 0 for y and z, you're going to get negative 3x equals 20. So that's going to be negative 20. You plug in 0 for x and z, you can get 0, 0. So 5y equals 60, so you get 12. Plug in 0 for x and y, you're going to get uh, negative 2z equals 60, so your z value would be negative 30. So your x is negative 20, y is 12, and z is negative 30. So we want this one. Okay. And now your traces. Let's do a problem like this. And I'm going to do this on another sheet of paper. I'll go back to this sheet. Okay. So we can talk about traces. I brought it up a little bit before, but I didn't really talk about it yet. So let's find traces. So this problem says, what is the xy trace of, this is number six, 2x minus 4y plus z is equal to eight. Okay, first of all, I'm going to graph this. I'm going to graph by graphing my three intercepts. The x-intercept is when y and z are zero. So if those go away, of 2x equals eight, you get four. The y-intercept is the y value when x and z are 0. So you have negative 4y equals 8, so that's going to be negative 2. The z-intercept is when the first two are 0, so we get 8. OK, let's graph this. So 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's the x-axis, 4, comma 0, comma 0. The y-intercept, we have to go to the left, so 1, 2. The y, that would be positive y, so negative y, so it's going to be 0, negative 2, 0, and then 4, up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 0, 0, 4. So this kind of looks like this. You can't see this that well, but you can tell it's back there, okay? So this plane is drawn, we would say, to the left of the xz plane, in front of the yz plane, 
and um, front of the y and above the x y plane. Okay. So now we've got to find our traces. So the x y trace, the x y trace is it's hard to see it, but it's this line right here. X y trace. So that's the line where this plane is going to intersect the xy plane. So this line right here actually lies on the xy plane. And what do we know about that line? Well, we know the z value is zero. So all we have to do is plug in zero into this equation and we have the equation of that line. So we put, plug in a z value of zero. We're going to get 2x minus 4y uh, equals 8. Plug in a zero for C. No need to put this in slope intercept form. Standard form is convenient. That's why we have different forms. Sometimes the different forms are convenient in different cases. Okay. This one right here, notice this is connecting the X axis, the X intercept to the Z intercept. So we're going to call it the X Z trace. What do we know about everything on the XZ trace? Well, we know the Y value is zero because we didn't move off of the XZ plane. So your Y value is zero. So we plug in a zero for Y. So we get 2X minus 4 times zero plus Z equals 8. That's our XZ trace. I know this question only asked for the XY trace, but I'm going to find all three. Okay. And then this one back here, this trace, this line is the intersection between our plane and the YZ plane. Notice it's connecting the Y intercept with the Z intercept. So conveniently, we call that the YZ trace. What do we know about every point on that line? Well, we didn't come off of the YZ plane, so the X value is zero. Okay, so we're going to plug in a zero for X. We get negative 4Y plus Z is equal to 8. And there's our YZ trace. Okay, so there's a quick lesson on traces. Don't make it more complicated. Leave them in standard form. Um, and what is the XY trace? We said the XY trace is 2X minus 4Y equals 8. Do, uh, oh, again, they just simplified it. Okay, dividing everything by 2, we'll get X minus 2Y equals 4. And that's this line right here. Okay, so that's equivalent. Okay, let's go to, um, oh, let's talk about this for a second. These points up here, 2, 1, 5, and 3, negative 4, 3, it said describe the location of each point. So I'm going to describe them in coordinate space. I'm going to describe them in relation to where they, where they are um, with relation to the xy plane, X, Z plane, and the Y, Z plane, okay? So this point right here, it's in front of the Y, Z plane because X is positive. So I'm going to say in front of the Y, Z plane, okay? Now, where is it in relation to the X, Y plane? Well, it's up, so it's above the X, Y plane. And then what about this plane, the XZ plane? Well, I'm going to say it's to the right. So it's this way. You would say either right or left. So I'm going to say right of the XZ plane. Okay. So for this one back here, you're going to say in front of or behind. If X is positive, you're in front of that plane. If X is negative, you're behind the, um, the YZ plane. For this one, we'll say above or below. If Z is positive, you're above the XY plane. If Z is negative, you're below the XY plane. And for this one over here, we're going to say to the right or to the left. So if Y is positive, you move to the right of y, the XZ plane. If Y is negative, we'll say you're to the left of that plane. Okay, so for this point right here, we're in front of the X, uh, the YZ plane. So in front of YZ plane. 
our z value is positive, so we're above the xy plane. And then we're to the left of this plane. Y is negative, so we're going to say left of the what plane? The x z plane. That's a z up there. Okay. And I left myself very little room to do this one, but I'll do it over here. Okay. All right, and let's go to the last page. So graphing these, if you want to do it with these, we're just going to do these very quickly. Okay. This is set up so you can find your intercepts. Your x-intercept is where y and z are zero. Your y-intercept are where x and z are zero. Your z-intercept are where x and y are zero. So if y and z are zero, you're going to get 2x equals 12. So x is 6. If x and z are zero, you get 3y equals 12. So y is 4. And if your z-intercept, these two are zeros, you get 4z equals 12. So you get 3. So on the x-axis, you go 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That point right here, we'll always label those points, 6, 0, 0. The y-intercept, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 4, 0. Z-intercept, 1, 2, 3, 0, 0, 3. You can connect those points. Just for fun, let's do, how about let's find this trace. This trace is the XZ trace. We know on the XZ trace, Y was zero. So you go back to your equation, you put in a zero for Y, your XZ trace is going to be 2X plus 4Z is equal to 12. You can simplify that X plus 2Z equals six. That's your XZ trace, and I'll leave these for you to find, okay? And I'll do this one also and put that on the answer key, but I'm not going to go through that right now. Okay, and finally, these are fun problems. Write an equation of the, line, the plane given the intercepts. So this intercept is your x-intercept. That's the point 8, 0, 0. This is your y-intercept, 0, negative 3, 0. This is your z-intercept, 0, 0, 6. Okay? Now, we know the... I'm just going to do one of these together, and I'll leave you to do the other one. Um, we know that the equation of a plane is ax plus by plus cz is equal to d. Okay? Let's plug in each one of these ordered pairs and make an equation. So if we plug in 8, remember this is an x value, this is a y value, this is a z value. So we're going to plug in, we're going to replace the x with an 8. So that becomes a times 8, or 8x. We're going to plug in 0 for y and 0 for z. So these two go away. Okay, 8x equals d. Let's plug in this ordered triple. Okay, so we get... This is an x, this is a y, this is a z. So we're playing in 0 in for x, so that goes away. We're playing in negative 3 for y, so b times negative 3. Uh, sorry, we're plugging that, that in for the negative y, so that should be a b. Just like here, we've replaced the x, we replaced with the 8. So that's 8 times a, so that should be an a. And that's going to be equal to you know, z was 0, so that goes away also. Okay, and then this one, we're going to plug in the 6 for z. So that's going to be c times 6. 6c six equals d. Okay, and notice that these two, x was 0 and y was 0, so we plugged in a 0 there and a 0 there. Those went away. So now from this, we're going to try to figure out how to do this equation. Now notice what I'm going to do. I'm going to solve all of these for D. So if 8A equals D, I'll solve for A. A is equal to D over 8. 
B is equal to negative D over 3. And C is equal to D over 6. Okay. Now I'm going to take this initial equation, and everywhere I see an A, I'm going to plug in D over 8. Everywhere I see a B, I'm going to plug in this. Everywhere I see a C, I'm going to plug in this. So this A times X becomes D over 8 times X, and then plus B times Y plus B, so minus D over 3Y, then plus C times Z, so plus D over 6 times Z is equal to D. Okay. Now notice we've got a D everywhere. Let's divide both sides of the equation by D. All the Ds go away. So we've got X over 8 minus Y over 3 plus Z over 6 is equal to 1. Okay. Now I don't want the fractions. Let's find the least common multiple of these. So 8 is not, how about 16? No, 24. I think 24 works. Multiply both sides by 24. So this is going to give me 3x minus, distribute that, 24 over 3 minus 8y, and then plus 4z is equal to 24. There's your equation. Okay, now I'll leave you to do this one and I'll put that on the answer key. And that's all for now.